I want to bring in someone with some insight into the U.S. intelligence community, though. Joining me right now is former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Mike Rogers. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Okay, so serious question. When the president casts doubt on the intelligence community, and this is not the first time he's done that, what effect does that have on those public servants, agents, operatives, some of whom are in deep cover abroad? Do his words matter when it comes to uh, questioning the accuracy of our intelligence reports? Absolutely it does. And not just for the reasons you might think it makes them you know, hurt their feelings and they're <laughs> going to pout about it. It also means a difference when, remember, we're asking these folks to go to really tough uh, and, and difficult and dangerous neighborhoods mm -hmm. and go to ask people, you know what, we need you to spy against your own country uh, for us, yeah. for the United States, for something bigger than yourself. And when the President of the United States expresses doubt, it makes that case officer's problem, who's trying to run an, S, uh, yeah. a, uh, an agent overseas, that much more difficult. I wish he would stop doing this. It doesn't help anything. And uh, listen, Vladimir Putin is now the cheese in the Russian mousetrap for Trump. I mean, they always lead with something a little tasty to get you in. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't care if they're running an intel operation or some big political play internationally. And Trump seems to have some kind of be a little starstruck almost to me yeah. for Vladimir Putin. And I think he makes these kind of dumb things. He's got to end up walking them back uh, to try to get things back on track. Well, I'm actually just glad that he did. I mean, he hasn't always done that. He's really yeah, sort of stuck with that rhetoric. So it was that's true. Someone actually, you know, obviously got in his ear. So, so how did how did in your assessment how did the president's trip? I mean, most of the headlines were talking about Trump insulting Kim Jong Un on Twitter or an awkward handshake or a he said he said with Duterte on 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 human rights abuses. But substantively, do you think that Trump uh, got anything that he came for? Um, you know, I think he made some key mistakes. I think there was a big, bright, shiny moment. Remember, uh, George Bush threw up on the table in front of the Japanese prime minister. He got through all that. Remember okay, those days? Yes. Yeah. So we, you know, an, awkward hand, an awkward handshake, I think we can get, we'll get over that. Yeah. What, what, the one thing that I thought was actually really good, if I can, because there's lots of bad news about what he did. You know, he kind of insulted the Vietnamese. He, he went after the Japanese economy in relation to the United States. Not things that you would hope your, your president would do. Yep. He's trying to build stronger relationships. Here's the one thing I thought he got exactly right. He Good. went to Korea and he said he gave the North Koreans an option to come to the table. I thought that was a bright moment on his trip, if I may. And I'll tell you why. And our U.S. military is preparing to go. We have two uh, carrier strike groups uh, in the neighborhood. We have troops that are uh, on a higher alert status. We're, lots of things are happening in that region that, you know, a miscalculation could go wrong. The president, I thought, did that piece very, very well. He got there and said, hey, we're tough. We mean it. We'll, we'll actually take you out. All, however, I'm going to give you the option to come to the table. Mm -hmm. I thought that was one bright light in all of his Asia trip, and I wish he'd stop talking about the rest of it. Oh, Mike Rogers, you always <laughs> calm me down. It's so nice to hear your reassuring words. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Okay.